All right, welcome everyone. September is National Preparedness Month, which is meant to promote disaster and emergency planning. Well, one could argue we're following along with that theme because we're gonna be talking about sustainable protection with smart leak detection systems for your home. And part of this discussion is centered on smart technology. Now, for all you builders, architects, and designers in the audience, this is an area of the home building industry that you really need to pay attention to. According to a recent study of American homeowners, nearly half define a move-in ready home as containing smart technology. With smart leak detection systems becoming the next frontier in the connected home, you really need to be aware of the available solutions that can provide the best protection from water leaks and conservation of our most precious resource. Our presenter today is Eric Scari, Innovation Manager for Intelligent Water at Upinor. Eric has been in the residential plumbing and fire safety industries for 18 years, with an emphasis in product marketing, product engineering, and product project management. As a volunteer firefighter and a professional member of various fire protection associations, he's passionate about water conservation and personal protection. And if you're not keeping score at home, Eric is a returning guest on the webinar series with his first appearance coming about five years ago. Now today's webinar is brought to you by Upinar. And Upinar is a global pioneer in innovative PEX piping solutions for flawless plumbing, heating, and cooling systems that enrich the lives of millions worldwide. The company is driving progress with intelligent solutions that support high-performing, smart building practices while advancing the industry through innovation, education, and advocacy. Now, if you have any questions during the course of today's presentation, you can submit those for our guest by using the questions box in the GoToWebinar control panel, which is probably on the right side of your screen. I'll review those questions and pose them to Eric during the Q&A time set aside after his presentation. Eric, welcome back to the program. Thanks very much, Mike. First, I'd like to just start off by making sure everybody realizes that we're really not paying attention. Studies, statistics, and news reports bombard us every day, trying to help us understand that this beautiful planet we call home is facing a global crisis. But it doesn't seem like we're hearing that message, or we think it's not going to affect us. As Mike said, I'm Eric Scari, the Innovation Manager for Upinor's Intelligent Water Team. And today, I'm going to add a few more statistics and maybe a different perspective to give you another chance to learn what it is that we can do to help save our planet. Globally, water scarcity is an issue. It's a growing problem that we shouldn't ignore. It's estimated that nearly two thirds of the world's population about 4 billion people will experience severe water shortages at least one month of the year. Huge areas of the globe are already experiencing water scarcity, and with demand for clean water rising, the situation isn't expected to get better unless we keep working towards smarter water use. UNESCO estimates that with the existing climate change scenario, water scarcity could displace up to 700 million people. As water demand continues to increase, and most estimate, estimates predict that by 2050, we'll need 20 to 30% more water. Uh, some groups, such as the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, estimate that by 2050, that demand could be 55% higher than it is today. These statistics paint a dire picture, and we need to ensure that we make smart decisions when it comes to addressing water conservation. But water scarcity isn't just a problem facing other parts of the planet. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, almost 75% of the U.S. is expected to face water shortages within the next five years. Many areas of the country have been working hard to promote water conservation some areas have implemented very strict water usage guidelines and ordinances. Unfortunately, there's a lot of areas in our country that still aren't paying attention. Again, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, when they analyzed the depletion of groundwater resources in 40 of the specific aquifer systems in the U.S., the majority are showing rapid depletion 
in the volumes of water available. The folks in the Southwest US are faced with water conservation messages and programs every day. But it isn't just these areas that will face this issue in the future. The fastest depletion of groundwater is actually occurring in the Plains states, and water use there continues to increase with little thought of what may be available in the future. This is just another example showing how much more water we're using, and if our behaviors don't change, water scarcity challenges will continue to escalate. You've probably seen this startling image before, but it's a very visible and compelling reminder that dramatic water shortages exist, at least for some people. Areas in the Southwest US especially, like I said, have imposed strict water conservation ordinances, and they've been effective so far, but more needs to be done. With Lake Mead only 55% full, and due to demands from farms, cities, and growing populations, more needs to be done to protect this valuable resource. And more steps will be taken, as Lake Mead will enter 2020 just one foot below the threshold that triggers automatic cuts in water delivery to Arizona and, New and Nevada from the Colorado River, according to the Bureau of Reclamation's annual 24-month study of the Colorado River Basin. The study sets operational plans for Lake Mead and Lake Powell based on the previous year's reservoir levels, the inflows and outflows. This is the first time in the rolling 24-month study that has resulted in the triggering of mandatory cuts in water supply. There are signs that we're starting to catch on. Recent surveys do indicate that there is at least an awareness of the looming crisis. Unfortunately, still more than half of the U.S. population doesn't think they will be affected by a water shortage within the next 10 years. Water utility managers, however, know that's probably not true. Attempting to change water use behavior through price increases has had an effect in some areas, but the majority of the population still isn't aware of the issue, and for the most part, water is still relatively inexpensive. In addition to water conservation programs and price hikes, the EPA's WaterSense program has been very successful. By offering simple ways to reduce water use, WaterSense has helped Americans save water every day without even really changing our thinking or behaviors. Through the end of 2018, WaterSense has helped save a total of 3.4 trillion gallons of water and more than $84 billion in water and energy bills through the use of more water efficient fixtures and appliances. As a bonus, the use of WaterSense labeled products saved over 460 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. These are encouraging messages regarding conservation and sustainability, but not all of our water problems can be solved by changing our behaviors and our fixtures. We also need to address the amount of water we waste due to aging infrastructure, faulty plumbing systems, and leaky pipes. In North America, it's estimated that we waste more than a trillion gallons of water every year due to leaks. That's enough water for 11 million homes. Those aging systems and devices are leaking at an alarming rate. It could be something small, like a toilet flapper failing to seat properly, or a small drip under a sink that we just haven't gotten around to fixing. In other cases, the plumbing system could have a pinhole leak that we don't see until it turns into major damage, like a ceiling caving in or mold growing behind a wall. Sometimes it's a catastrophic pipe burst or an ice maker hose that breaks free. These leaks create a lot of damage to our homes and account for the second largest category of insurance claims, resulting in over a billion dollars in claims. Although the average water damage claim is just under $9,000, almost everyone knows someone personally that has experienced water damage much more than that, in the $20,000 or $30,000 range or more. Water leaks are common, 
And as systems continue to age, they're going to become more prevalent. It's not just about the leaks that cause damage. I'm hoping you already didn't forget the statistics I shared at the beginning about the water scarcity crisis. Those dripping faucets don't necessarily do damage to our homes. The water's going down the drain, not onto the hardwood floor or dripping behind a wall, but it is being wasted. And at a rate that you probably don't realize. If you had a leaky faucet or a, a toilet flapper that was leaking just 30 drips a minute, that would equate to over 50 billion gallons of water wasted every year if even just one quarter of the homes experienced a leak like that. Maybe you didn't know you had a leaky faucet or a toilet flapper, but if you knew how much water it was wasting, you'd probably want to get it fixed right away. We should understand what the problem is, but it doesn't seem to hit home. We aren't aware that we might be contributing to the problem. And for some of us, it seems like it just won't affect us. We continue to let the faucet drip because we don't know the impact or we don't even know it's dripping. We let the toilet continue to run because it's not making a mess. And unless you're paying close attention to your water bill and you live in an area where water is expensive, it might just not even be something that you're aware of. But we see the headlines and we know we should pay attention. There are emerging technologies that can make a difference and start changing behavior. There are some new innovations that are bringing technology to the plumbing industry. In just a bit, I'll tell you a bit more about one of those exciting devices. Until now, conservation programs have really focused on energy efficiency. Product manufacturers have responded as societies slowly realize the importance of conservation and sustainability. Smart, connected, high efficiency appliances and thermostats have proliferated and have also made a significant impact. Since 1992, Energy Star and its partners have helped American families and businesses save nearly 4 trillion kilowatt hours of electricity and achieve over 3 billion metric tons of greenhouse gas reductions, the equivalent to the annual emissions of over 600 million cars. In 2017 alone, Energy Star and its partners helped Americans save approximately 370 billion kilowatt hours and avoid $330 billion in energy costs. While also in decreasing greenhouse gas emissions by almost 300 million metric tons. And it's not just major appliances that are available in connected versions and Energy Star options. Americans purchased more than 300 million Energy Star certified products and more than 300 million Energy Star certified light bulbs in 2017 alone. Cumulatively, that means a total of more than 6 billion products and more than 4 billion light bulbs. The combination of Energy Star with other connected devices including everything from doorbells, locks, switches, lights, vacuum cleaners, even grills. They're all touting the safety, convenience, and energy efficiency of the new smart home. And homeowners are increasingly in interested in safe, secure homes. And in today's smartphone society, that means knowing everything is working well, even if they aren't at home. And now finally, there are product solutions that bring that in, that bring intelligent water into the conservation picture. Through a joint venture between Belkin International and Upinor, the company Finn was created to bridge the gap between technology and plumbing, bringing together the leading consumer electronics company and the worldwide leader in plumbing systems. This is the perfect marriage between IP plumbing and IOT. FIN is the result of Upinor's strive for progress while also solidifying our position within the intelligent water category, giving us the opportunity to interact with water in a more meaningful way and help homeowners protect their homes, conserve water, 
and ultimately save money. Finn, working hand in hand with our team at Upanor, created Finn Plus Smart Water Assistant Plus Shutoff. This single device installed on the home's main water line features an ultrasonic flow meter, temperature sensor, and high definition pressure sensor encased in a modern design that elevates it from a simple plumbing product into the realm of smart home devices. This one device, utilizing patented technology, including machine learning and AI, monitors your whole home plumbing system. Fin Plus measures tiny changes in pressure 240 times a second to detect plumbing issues in real time. It also conducts a daily diagnostic system check to ensure your plumbing system is healthy and working properly. In the event that an issue were to arise, say one of those pinhole leaks in your copper pipes, the homeowner would re receive an alert within the FIN app and can take action right there and remotely shut off the water from anywhere in the world, preventing that costly damage before it occurs and stopping that water waste. If a catastrophic event were to occur, such as a pipe burst, Fin Plus would automatically shut off the water for you, alert you of the situation, and even connect you directly to your Upanor Pro Squad plumber right from within the app. The Fin Plus device analyzes the unique pressure waves that are transmitted through the water every time a fixture is used. It learns each home individually the specific fixture types, flow rates, and patterns of usage. In order to create the extensive database of knowledge that Fin Plus uses to protect homes, Fin and Upanor conducted a pilot program which generated over 10 billion data points from 10 million distinct water events. So Fin Plus can begin protecting against leaks and water waste as soon as it's installed. Although this foundation is already built in to Fin Plus, it continues to learn each home individually as more data is collected and analyzed. Interaction from the homeowner when Fin sees something it doesn't recognize helps train the algorithms for that specific home, making it even more responsive and reliable. The Fin pilot study was the culmination of 10 years of development refining the algorithms and technology behind FIN's patented technology. This study revealed a significant number of leaks and unintended water events occurring in a surprising number of homes. The pilot provided real-world confirmation that leaks and unintentional water waste are almost sure to occur in every home at some point or another. During our pilot study, we analyzed the leak events that occurred and found that the vast majority of leaks were due to faulty toilet flappers and that these leaks accounted for 27% of the wasted water. In most cases, this is a problem that is solved by jiggling the handle and then walking away. And I'd venture a guess that everyone listening has fixed a leaky toilet flapper that way. But do you catch it every time? If you left that running, you could waste thousands of gallons of water over the course of a year. In our pilot study, we also identified the biggest culprit in terms of total wasted water were irrigation leaks. Although they only accounted for 14% of the leaks, irrigation systems resulted in 33% of the wasted water. Irrigation leaks often go unnoticed for long periods of time typically until there's a soft spot in the yard, a nice green patch, or a puddle finally forms. Or you get your water bill and see the enormous charges. I'd be remiss if I didn't also comment on how much water we pour onto our yards every year. Many times, just so we have a nice green lawn to mow. Half or more of the water used in the U.S. is attributed to irrigation. So we certainly have opportunities for conservation if we assess the importance of that nice green yard. I'll step down from that soapbox for a minute and get back to the pilot study. But as we talk about changing behavior, that's something we also heard from our pilot participants. 
In addition to helping refine the algorithms for leak detection and guide the features offered by FIN Plus, the pilot program raised homeowners' awareness of their water usage by providing their usage data. Not only did the study identify leaks, but it helped homeowners start to identify ways they could change their behaviors. Knowing specific usage by fixture type caused some homeowners to take shorter showers or change how they washed clothes and dishes. So from a conservation standpoint, FIN not only helps prevent wasted water, but also promotes good water stewardship. Refined through the pilot study, the unique approach of FIN Plus is the high definition pressure wave sensing to understand the distinct fingerprints of the fixtures in each individual home. When you turn on a faucet, a shower, or washing machine, pressure changes throughout your entire plumbing system. Every fixture transmits a unique pressure signature through the water, and FIN Plus, by measuring these microscopic changes 240 times a second, helps determine what's normal or potentially a problem. When you run a faucet, FIN knows it's a faucet. And if that faucet leaks, FIN can let you know. FIN Plus is constantly monitoring the water events in your home and using both flow and pressure data and the water usage patterns helps differentiate between normal events like running a bath, watering your lawn, or a catastrophic leak like a burst pipe or a ruptured washing machine hose. And FIN Plus continues to learn what each individual home has for normal water usage, because we all use water differently and we all have different fixtures. The more data FIN's able to collect from each individual home helps build an even more robust and broad database of technology. That can help each individual home recognize what's normal and accurately predict when something doesn't look right. For example, if a large flow event occurs, but the pressure signature at the start of that event didn't get recognized by FIN, an alert will be sent to the homeowner via the app and a smart notification that there may be a leak. If the homeowner doesn't respond and the flow is large enough, FinPlus can automatically shut off the water to the home to help prevent potential damage and minimize that water waste. FinPlus also uses the pressure in your plumbing system, in addition to temperature of the water, to identify potential freezing conditions anywhere in your plumbing system. From that single location, even a gradual tiny increase in water pressure can indicate the potential of ice crystals forming and alert you to that problem. If the pressure continues to rise, a freeze warning is sent and provides suggestions on how to keep that water from freezing in the pipe, which can lead to a burst pipe with some types of plumbing materials. Water Use Plus, another feature that Finn has included in the app, provides even greater insights into the water usage in the home. Every water event is categorized by fixture type and can be sorted and filtered to understand how water is used. The monthly view provides a heat map comparing how much water is used on any given day. Fin Plus will also provide a comparison of your water usage to the average water use for similar families. Events can be confirmed or recategorized by the homeowner to ensure FIN Plus is accurate and continuing to learn how water is used in each individual home. In addition to continuously monitoring flow, temperature, and pressure, FIN Plus performs regular plumbing checks, normally conducted at night or other times when water isn't normally being used. FIN will close the shutoff valve and monitor the pressure in the system. If there's a pressure decay, FIN knows that water is leaking or flowing somewhere in the system and will alert the homeowner that there may be a leak. The high definition pressure sensing ensures that even a pinhole leak or a dripping faucet will be detected. And FIN Plus can now be integrated into your Alexa or Google Home, Google Assistant, Smart Home, 
and even through IFTTT. Once Fin Plus has been connected to your platform, you can use voice commands to learn how much water has been used or control the built-in shutoff valve. And with IFTTT integration, other devices, such as a moisture detector, can be used to trigger a fin, fin, trigger fin plus to turn off the water. Or if fin plus sends a leak alert, you can receive a phone call or change the color of your smart light bulbs. With multi-device support, additional fin plus devices can be installed potentially in an aging parent's home to help monitor daily usage as well as protect from plumbing leaks. Fin Plus learns what the normal patterns of usage are and when there are significant deviations such as water left running for long periods, an alert can give you early warning that something might be wrong at that home. Additionally, by monitoring the Water Use Plus data on a remote Fin Plus device, you can get insights into what typical water usage looks like and when fixtures are being used. Seeing a long period of inactivity can also be an indication that something might be wrong and someone needs assistance. Leak detection is a rapidly growing area. The devices are proliferating with many different approaches and levels of sophistication. They range from individual moisture sensors that emit a loud alarm to multiple pucks that are placed where a leak might occur and connect to a hub. Other devices are installed on the main water line like Fin Plus. Many devices can be connected to Wi-Fi and provide alerts, but there are drawbacks to a lot of these approaches. Devices that simply monitor flow rates aren't able to accurately distinguish between fixtures that flow similar rates, and that results in false alerts. Most moisture sensors or puck systems either don't include a shutoff valve or they are difficult to install and maintain, and you have to guess where the water will leak. The devices that learn your patterns can be fooled during holidays or when guests are visiting and some require a subscription service to get access to the in-depth water usage data. The FIN Plus Smart Water Assistant Plus Shutoff eliminates those drawbacks by providing the best technology, pressure wave sensing, an ultrasonic flow meter, no subscription fees to access robust, in-depth water usage and whole house leak detection as well as providing preventative maintenance guidance for your plumbing system. It truly creates a new frontier in sustainability. Fin Plus brings the Internet of Things into the plumbing realm to conserve water, both through leak mitigation and by changing behaviors. When homeowners see and understand the data and by reducing waste associated with water damage that may occur. I want to thank you very much for attending today, and I'll turn it over, back over to Mike. Great. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate that, and sorry again for the interruption earlier. Um, certainly, if anybody's got questions, please go ahead and send them in via that questions box. Um, you know, I. I wanted to hit on something that you talked about earlier, really just to kind of underscore it. Um, you talked about the expense of water. Um, uh, you talked about it from an infrastructure standpoint, and I want to hit on infrastructure in a moment, but but just the pure expense of water, uh, and, and from two vantage points. You know, homeowners, we don't really pay the full freight of water. Um, it is subsidized, and, and that makes sense from the standpoint of, look, it's a vital resource, everybody needs it. Um, but but we also know that we don't pay the full freight of water in our bills. Um, but then the other part of the expense of water is in the realm of water litigation. Um, and you talked about the Colorado River, you talked about Arizona, New Mexico, uh, some of the Western states, Nevada. Um, you know, there's a lawsuit between the state of Texas against uh, New Mexico and Arizona. And I mean, if it, if it goes the way of Texas, each of those states, I think, owes Texas like a half a billion dollars each. And how many states have that much money just laying around to be able to pay out a lawsuit? So, 
um, this is incredibly important, just water management. It ties into systems like FIN. Um, we, we just don't really fully comprehend how expensive this can get. And it's only going to get worse as more and more of those water purveyors and water providers recognize the shortages that are looming on the horizon. About the only trigger they can pull is rising costs. Well, and, and then we look at the infrastructure part, right? So infrastructure is expensive. And you talked about aging infrastructure. And look, we, we can't avoid replacing infrastructure altogether, even though it is very expensive. But I think practices like leak detection can help delay some of those costs so that whether it's utilities, municipalities, whomever it is, they can kind of bank some of the money that's needed for those eventual expenses. Absolutely. And by providing that early warning, it really starts to act as a preventative maintenance program. So you can identify a potential problem when it's very small, when it can be planned for and, uh, and avoid the, the expense of an emergency repair that may occur and result in overtime charges and uh, extra labor required to deal with uh, some of the things that we see now. Uh, I mean, it, not a lot of time goes by when we don't see a sinkhole and swallowing up cars, and a lot of that is due to water main breaks and, and other issues like that with our infrastructure. And that even occurs within our homes. Uh, you know, eventually, uh, every new home turns into an old home, and all the products there uh, age as well. So. Uh, things that we can do now to help understand uh, how our systems are working and and keep them working in a healthy manner um, by identifying potential high pressure uh, situations that that add wear and tear and prematurely and premature failure all of those things can can have a significant impact and a huge impact on our overall water usage from a conservation standpoint. You know, I think you touched on it a little bit during your presentation, Eric, um, but I'm curious, have you seen traction uh, amongst some of the utilities uh, that you, you meet with and speak to um, in regards to this being able to help them reduce their non-revenue water loss? Well, we're definitely seeing that uh, a lot of interest and and it touches on so many different aspects, um, not just from from lost water uh, that that homeowners want to um, want to avoid paying those large bills um, and, and, you know, will potentially negotiate with with their water purveyor on. But um, by including and and capitalizing on the features that that leak detection systems and, and fin plus can offer many water purveyors are looking at partnering with builders um, if it's a if it's a municipal water supply uh, they're actually they're actually looking at providing incentives and rebates to include leak detection devices in new homes so yeah, they're, they're, they recognize the value from several different aspects and, uh, and want to help homeowners make the decision to, to put leak detection devices in their homes. All right, I, I wanted to get to a question from John. Um, he wants to know if, you, if the FIN unit is available for existing system installation. Yes, it is. It can be installed on virtually any um, any plumbing pipe. It's installed on the main water line, and adapters are available. Uh, threaded adapters are available, basically to transition to any type of water pipe, uh, and and works with really any 
any water supply, whether it be a well or a municipal water supply. It can be installed indoors or outdoors. Uh, it just needs power within 15 feet and uh, a Wi-Fi connection. Okay. Uh, we had another question about, is the uh, unit's internal tubing made from polymer? Yes, it is a polymer, um, a polymer flow body. The, the device is manufactured uh, through a partnership with Badger Meter, one of the largest water meter manufacturers in the world. And uh, it's manufactured using their state-of-the-art technology and their uh, century of experience building water meters and similar devices. Oh yeah, Badger is very well known. Um, that's great that you guys have partnered with them. Uh, I wanted to certainly encourage people to send in uh, their questions if they have them. We're getting to them now. Um, I had another one for you, Eric. Um, you mentioned in one of your slides towards the end, you know, kids leaving a faucet running. Uh, we've probably all seen that. Um, so talk to me a little bit about how Fin Plus can remedy that situation if I'm away from the home for a couple hours. Well, the first thing you can do when you get that alert that uh, and typically that will that alert would come in and I've seen it at my home um, that it looks like the a faucet's been left on and uh, are you still using this water? Well, I realized nobody was at home. So right from the app, I can turn my water off. And so when I get got home, I was able to turn the water back on and quickly identify what faucet was left on and go turn it off. So you have access to shut off um, as long as you have, you continue to have cell service and are, uh, have your alerts set up. Uh, those alerts come right to your smartphone and you, phone and you can take action from anywhere in the world. Now then, so you, you deactivate that. Um, let's talk, walk me through now I get back home, okay? I get back home. Obviously, I'm going to want to use that faucet again. So then what do I do from there? Again, right from the app, you can turn the water back on. And okay. at that point, sure. um, again, in my case, it was uh, it was a combination tub shower. And the water got mostly turned off. It just didn't quite get all the way shut off. And it was right. just running down the tub drain. So when I got home, I turned the, uh, turned the water back on using the Fin app. I could hear the water running. I walked upstairs and and saw immediately what the issue was uh, and was able to just turn that faucet off. Awesome, okay. And then my final question to you is, um, I would think, you know, going back to the non-revenue water loss and some of the real benefits, uh, financial benefits to a system like this, are you seeing yet any uh, incentives being offered for these types of leak detection systems from municipalities, municipally owned water districts or anything like that? We've got some pilot programs in place um, in, in the Las Vegas area, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has a program where they are offering an incentive to homeowners for installing leak detection devices. And so they did some some independent testing of a, a few different devices and are offering uh, varying levels of a rebate to get a to get a unit installed. Um, we're also seeing some activity in the Santa Fe area. Um, Santa Fe has been extremely progressive and one of the earliest uh, adopters of a really aggressive water conservation programs um, and some really unique programs as well. And so they're they're looking at um, water usage in, in restaurants and trying to identify where that water is going, how much is being used in various applications. And, and they're looking at expanding that program a little bit. So we're definitely seeing some interest um, the challenge that exists with municipal um, municipal water purveyors or water authorities uh, and, and some of those kinds of things is that they're budgeted out already for, you know, into next year. 
and may not have funds available for a new program until the next year rolls around. So we're expecting to see that uh, grow over the course of the next year and more and more communities, um, especially those that, uh, that are facing water shortages already or uh, restrictions on, on new home building because there isn't enough water available. Those are the areas that are really looking at um, a lot of different ways to conserve water and promote um, good water stewardship. I know both Doug and Toby out there at Southern Nevada Water Authority, both good guys. So hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully they are they're doing good things with you because I know they are certainly forward thinking out there. And obviously the city of Santa Fe have worked with them quite a bit. So um, it sounds like you're working with some wonderful people. I've got another question coming in from Matt. Um, does the unit require uh, some kind of power backup or does it have a battery? So you know, what happens in case the power goes out on the fin plus? Uh, it does not have a battery backup. So if the power goes out, the unit stays in the state that it was in. The shutoff valve stays open if it was open or it stays closed if it was closed for some reason. Um, once power comes back on uh, and the internet is restored, it will um, go back into its protection mode, but uh, it basically loses its ability at that point without power um, to identify leaks uh, or really connect uh, because in most cases the Wi-Fi would also be out at that point. And so um, once it comes back on, it will reconnect and, and just resume where it was. Uh, that's a good point, yeah. Because even if you did put a battery back up onto the fin, you still have the issue of is your uh, wireless modem operating. Correct. Uh, that's a good point, yeah. All right, well, I don't see any other questions, so I wanted to you know, thank you very much, Eric, for coming on back on the program here and sharing your time with us and uh, your knowledge on, uh, on Finn and, and your passion for water conservation and protection. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure, and thanks to all that have been listening. I want to thank you also. Uh, thank you to Upanor, uh, the wonderful people over there, Kim and Ingrid, for sponsoring today's webinar. To our wonderful audience, for their questions. Uh, John and Matt, really appreciate you guys uh, chiming in with your questions. Um, you know, I need to let you know about our next webinar that's coming up. Uh, it's on Wednesday, October 9th. It's going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to be learning more about the upcoming changes to Title 24 in California. I'll be joined by Jeff Wicks of NIA and Greg Holiday of Bradford White Water Heaters. I hope you'll join us here in three weeks' time. Until then, I wish everyone has a great rest of your September, and we hope to see you back here in mid-October. Take care.